I'm from North Royalton originally, so not too far from Brunswick. Um, well, nice to meet you all. And because I wasn't taking notes, please don't quiz me later. Because I did not <laughs> pass that test on remembering names. Um, but as uh, Alan mentioned, I'm Mike. And I, yeah, I've been in Northeast Ohio all my life. But um, my wife and I have lived in Lakewood for the past, I think it's been four years. Before that, we were both living downtown uh, in the warehouse district. And before that, I was living here in Ohio City for a few years. So we, we're very passionate about Northeast Ohio because we've been here a while. Um, it's where we'll be raising Edison and if we have any other children. So um, we're always thinking of ways to improve the area. But e-funeral actually is something for, for me that started not really all that long ago. It, we've only been in business for just over a year. Um, but what I figured was, aside from showing you the website and sharing some things as to how it could be useful for you know, some families that you're working with, I figured I'd, I'd give you a little bit more of a background on even why we created eFuneral um, and what it's meant to do. So I'll start with um, sharing just kind of a little bit of a background about both me and then my partner, Brian Chaikin. Uh, Brian and I actually both worked for a startup company in Northeast Ohio called Findaway World. And Findaway World produced a product called Playaway, which was a digital audiobook. And we were both one of the very early employees. I was actually the first employee that they hired in 2005. And Brian, he was the first software developer, but probably employee number eight or nine. And it was cool for us because it was truly a startup. I mean, when we started, there was no revenue. We were really trying to build a company from the ground up. And what happened is, as the company was growing, we started growing within the organization. So I started leading the sales team, business development team. Um, Brian hired a team of developers and he was managing them. And then what happened was about two years, well, about a year and a half before we left, uh, the company created this new division called Product Innovation, where basically we were responsible for launching new products for the company. Um, and we co-led that division. It was the two of us, we shared an office, we had a team, uh, and it was fun because that, that's kind of what I'm into is new products, launching new things. And same with Brian. Um, the only problem, well, and this happened totally outside of work, uh, my cousin Ed passed away. And this was, so now at this point, it's about two years ago, not to the day, but I mean pretty much two years ago was when this had happened. And my cousin was a younger guy. I mean, he's older than me, but he was in his 40s. So it was something that we weren't planning for. It was kind of a sudden thing. And he lived in Parma. And so, you know, for us, we went from one day Ed's with us to the next day we're trying to figure out what to do to plan his funeral. And in Parma, I mean, for those that are familiar with the community and, and sort of funeral homes in the area, what we quickly found out is there's about 12 funeral homes within three miles of where Ed lived. So it's not as if we had never planned a funeral before, but it's not as if there was one single funeral home we were connected to that was in Ed's neighborhood. So the question for us at that point in time wasn't where, you know, what's the phone number for the local funeral home? Like my wife grew up in Salem, Ohio. There's one funeral home in 10 miles of Salem. It, if that was the case, that would be easy. You just figure out the phone number for that funeral and call it. For us, it was, okay, there's 12. How do we know which of these 12 are the best to work with for us? How do we know which maybe are, you know, know our family well and they can work with our, you know, custom needs? Could they work with our budget? You know, are they pricing services differently? These are things that we had no idea on how to answer. Those are questions we just didn't know how to answer. So I remember my dad mentioned Angie's List as a you know, way that he connected with contractors. He's like, is there anything like this for funeral services? And I assumed that there was, mostly because Pastor Allen mentioned I, I'm a tech guy. I like to think of myself as, you know, I go to the web for a lot of things. I've seen all types of ratings and review sites for everything from restaurants to professors. And I figured there's got to be something online that can help us get the information we need to make make a decision on who to have the first conversation with, I quickly found out that there wasn't. There's directory sites, so if you wanted to get just phone number and address, that, that I mean, you could get that in the yellow pages, but for that additional information, there wasn't a whole lot out there. So we ended up picking one. We kind of 
cross their fingers and hope for the best. And and they, you know, the funeral home that we worked with, it, they did a fine job. It wasn't as if they did a bad job at all. But I remember Hannah and I were at dinner later that night after the service took place. And we're at a restaurant where the only reason we chose that restaurant was because of reviews I read for it on Yelp. And I just remember thinking to myself, this is crazy. For something as inconsequential as dinner, where we spent 40 bucks, you know, I had more information to make a decision than planning Ed's funeral where we spent much more than $40, but even more important than that, it was an important family event for us, much more important than just a simple dinner. And that didn't sit right with me, that I could have more information to choose on where to go to dinner versus planning my cousin's funeral. So basically what happened is Brian and I, oh well, I brought it up to Brian in the office, you know, days after the service took place. And I just remember telling him about our situation and it resonated with him just because of what his family had gone through in the past. And Brian, you know, if I'm a tech guy, Brian's really a tech guy. I mean, he's a software developer by trade and, I, and I'm not. Brian started thinking about how can we use technology to solve this problem. We didn't really know what the solution would be quite yet, but right away we're thinking about how can we use technology to solve it. So the state of Ohio um, launched a, or they announced a program called the 10 Accelerator, where they were looking for 10 technology startup companies, either with just an idea and nothing else, or maybe they've been up and running for a year or so at most. They were looking for 10 companies that would either uh, come to Ohio or that were already here in Ohio. And they would provide a small grant, but a lot of mentorship from other technology entrepreneurs in the state. And we applied. Um, we, we got in, and then that's when we said, whoa, wait a minute, are we really going to do this? Are we, because to be in this program, we would have to quit our jobs, move to Columbus for the summer, and we're both married, and so that was a big thing for both of us. And uh, I remember we all met, the four of us, Brian, myself, and our two wives at um, Westside Market Cafe, not very far from here, one morning, to say, all right, look, are we really ready to give up our salaries? Are we really ready to give up everything that we've built the last few years with Findaway? And we just decided, all four of us, that if we were ever going to do this, not only was now the right time, but this was important enough where this is what we wanted to sort of leave our mark with. And so we ended up quitting our full-time <laughs> jobs at Findaway. I remember it was June 10th of last year. Uh, it was the last day at Findaway, and June 13th, we drove to Columbus, and we ended up, Brian and I lived there for most of the summer. We came back on weekends uh, to see our wives and things like that, but we started a funeral really at that time, and um, I'll kind of now give you a glimpse of what e-funeral is. Even though, I'll say when we launched it uh, a year ago, it looked a lot different than this. But basically, it's meant to be an all-in-one resource for information related to funeral planning. So you see some things on the front page like articles. Um, you can see in the bottom right-hand section, those are markets that we're actually in, including Northeast Ohio. But the three important things, and we'll go through the first one, is funeral home profiles. And the whole, and I'll kind of pause as, as we're going along here too, but um, the whole point of what we're trying to do is provide information that people can use to make a more informed funeral planning decision. And there's two major components that that information includes. One is price. So we want people to be able to see what funeral homes actually charge for their services. It, it's actually public information, so the, the Federal Trade Commission requires that um, if you ask a funeral home what the cost for their services are, they have to provide you with that information. It just turns out that most funeral homes, it, it's very difficult to access that information. Even though it should be public, it's not, you can't just go online and get it. It's really hard to get. So that's one component. We're trying to also provide information that can show what the potential service quality might be from that funeral home, because it's not all about cost. And for some people, they might not be interested in the least expensive, but they want to know who's the best. And we can't say who's best, but what we can do is provide a platform where other, other people can. So what we provide in the profiles are pricing information and then ratings and reviews from other families. And so we'll go in, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of press play to this video again. Um, but before I do, I guess I'll point out at the top. When you first log on and you choose funeral homes, you can 
input a little bit of information and customize how you want everything to look. So you can put in your zip code, you could say, show me just those funeral homes within five miles of Greater Cleveland. Uh, uh, you could say, show me, you know, all of Greater Cleveland if you want. Um, and in fact, you know, why don't I, I'm actually going to, rather than go through the whole video, it might be easier if I just pull it up online. And I'm going to do that. Um, 216 781 8232. Let's just see here. And then, here we go. Let me try that one more time. 216 781 8232. Originally, I was going to go through the, the, the video and it goes through everything, but I figured we could just do this in real time, actually. So we, we click on funeral homes. And again, this gives us the ability to put in our zip code if we want. Um, we can show within, you know, if you want to see within 50 miles or just within 5 miles, you can do that. Or you can just choose all of Greater Cleveland. And we have tools where you can chat with us, as you can see. Um, and then you can sort by distance or even alphabetically. But there's two things here. The first is we do allow funeral homes to pay to be members, but they don't have to be members. It, now, if they do pay to be members, they'll usually get shown first in the search rankings, but you can turn that off really easily. And you can also toggle so that you can show funeral homes that show pricing. What we've actually done is we've actually called Funeral, every single funeral home in Greater Cleveland and 10 other markets to collect this pricing information. We're doing this because rather than somebody turning to you or to a hospice social worker and that person trying to collect that info, we want you to be able to get that info easily here. Not everybody's provided it. I mean, there have been some funeral homes that even refuse to provide it, even though it's technically that's illegal. You know, they have to provide that information. But if they haven't provided it, then we, we say that in here. So you can see whether there's pricing available or not. And then there is, you know, we do show featured funeral homes, but you can simply search and see in the neighborhood pictures of the funeral homes. And if there, aren't, if there isn't a picture available, at least the map, along with whether pricing is available or not. Yeah, and you have it on the west side? Yeah, I mean, it's all, it goes as west as. West side. The west side. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know that we go as far as, say, uh, Are you as far Avon as Lake. I think we go even into Avon Lake, but I think even Lorraine and Elyria, but that's probably where it stops. Yeah, stuff in Elyria? Yeah. Okay. In fact, we 44035, I think. Yeah, 44035. So just as an example. Yeah, so you can see here oh, yeah. Bush and... Dickens. And so just as an example, when you click into one of these, you can view details. In this case, nobody's left a review, but for people to leave a review, it's easy. They could just click leave review. And we do have a, so all, you don't have to register, you don't have to submit your information, but we do have this. And this just prevents another, say, a competitor to just go and crawl the website. Yeah, that's what I asked about. That's what I was I mean, we want to make the we we want to make this information easily accessible, but it's just we're trying to protect it at least in a small way too. Thanks for making your gibberish legible. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that was a big deal. To that me. was that, that, that I, take seventy five tries to get it. Right, trying to get or you can't even see to, what the character. Not, not to take this off subject, but you know why that is? Why how captures um, originated? Don't you? It's actually a way to translate text to combination manuscripts, and so they use people. To do that. Wow, yeah. I did not know that. No, I didn't know that. Huh. That's, that's, a tool. Tool. that's a tool of their use. So we're, we're actually pulling a lot of this information. Even the pictures, I mean, we use tools like Google to actually, you know, Google Street View 
those little vans that sometimes yeah. you see around, I mean, we actually are using information that Google's providing to us to show pictures of the funeral home, even when the funeral home's not providing us with that information. In some cases, the funeral home doesn't even have a website, but you're able to get this information from <laughs> us and not, you know, not from them directly. But you can see here, we have, um, this is information that's coming from the funeral home's general price list. And if you didn't know what, for instance, a direct cremation was, you know, we're, we're trying to educate people on what that is. And the one thing that you don't see quite yet, but this is another thing that we're introducing is, we hear a lot from people, well, gosh, I don't even, you know, of those, what do I really need? And we're starting to see sort of people that are choosing options for a burial or a cremation where certain options are getting chosen over and over again. So what we want to do is say, look, for, from what we see, this is a popular burial option. This is a popular cremation option. And this is what, it would, this, is what this funeral home would charge for these five services. Uh, but for now, it's listed out item by item. And the other thing, so aside from, aside from this funeral home's profile page, which, again, if they're not a paid member, this is what it's going to show. Ratings, pricing, and basic contact information. The other nice thing that you can do is, and I'll go back to here, you, you can choose three of these. Yeah. And then here, yeah, oh. see on top, compare. And you can get a apples to apples comparison. And you know, this is just on price. We are gonna add to if somebody has ratings available, you'll be able to see the ratings right in here too. But at least it's one element where people can actually start to compare things. So this is this is the biggest component of what we're doing. Um, I will say there are two other components that we, we think are helpful. One of the pieces of feedback we got from families in the beginning was, I understand that the funeral home can help me with so much, but what about the other elements of a funeral service? How else can I save money on those elements? And so we're testing with this. We don't know, um, you know, we want to see if people find value out of this. It's, we call it e-funeral featured offers. And if any of, I don't like to use the comparison, which is not exactly like it, but if any of you use Groupon, it's kind of like a, I mean, this isn't a daily deal. This is just offers on funeral related goods and services. But if people can save money in any way, uh, you know, we want to be able to help them do that. Now we do, these are, these are people that have, have paid us to list an offer in here. So I want to be upfront about that. But again, we're testing to see if this is even something people would like. The other area of our website is the Resource Center. And this is where we have over 100 articles and videos on topics related to funeral planning and uh, end of life. You know, you can see some of the topics up top where if you click on any one of these, it, it uh, you know, changes and sort of modifies your, your view here. But these are, there's not, a busy, you know, these are free. Anybody can access these. And uh, another cool thing about the site is whether you're, whether you're using it on a laptop like I'm using it or on a mobile phone or an iPad or any sort of tablet, it, we've designed this in resp with responsive design, so it's meant to be useful no matter what device you're using. So I'll, I'll go back real quick to the... Mike, before you go yeah. off that too much, I have been really crowing about that because I continue to read some of those resources and I mean I had all the classes in seminary so I ought to be like up to date on all this stuff but there is some great stuff on there that I learned from. Thank you. And do you want to mention that you've about your connection with HuffPost? Yeah. Uh, or do you still have that connection with Huffington Post? Uh, not with Huffington Post. No. Uh, Didn't you say that, that you some of the writers from... Oh yeah. I, well we, we definitely, I think I know what you're referring to. So. It's not just me that's writing articles here. <laughs> we have people, licensed social workers that you'll see contribute to the uh, content section. We do have, that's right, there was uh, uh, somebody that's written, she, her concentration is end of life, and she writes for Huffington Post, and she contributes to our resources section. There's all types of people that, you know, this is what they do for a, for a living, is advise on topics related yeah. to end of life care. So, uh, yeah, that's probably what you're referring that to. That is. And, th and thank you for saying that, too. I appreciate that. Um, so just to go back here, I, just to kind of give you a sense of where we are now, 
We have pricing, certain ratings and reviews for 11 metropolitan markets. So we're here in Northeast Ohio, but we're also in other parts of the country, everywhere from DC, Baltimore, all the way to San Francisco and California. Um, and we really just launched our beta in February, so things have been moving pretty quickly for us. Um, we have gotten some media attention. Actually, there was an article just about a week ago in, in The Atlantic, which was, uh, which was cool. We were grateful that they uh, wrote about us. And now the interesting thing is people are beginning to recommend our services. So we, especially hospitals and hospice care facilities, um, there's now I think 45 different organizations throughout the country that are actively recommending us to families. And it's mostly because, you know, take it from a social worker's perspective at a hospice, they're turned to all the time by families to say, well, where do we go? What do we do? The problem is they don't want to recommend any, they're not allowed to recommend any specific funeral. They feel like they don't want to steer people in the wrong way. They don't, they're trying to avoid the perception of any sort of impropriety. But they can recommend services where, you know, like ours, where we're trying to be much more broad. And we're just, we're not telling you where to go, we're just providing you with information. So the one thing that, and, um, yeah, and this is benefits for, for you, and this is relevant to the social workers too. The reason why they're recommending it is take a social worker who used to be having to spend all afternoon on the phone collecting pricing info, they can now get that information in just a couple of minutes on our website, and it just allows them to spend more time with the families. Uh, and, and I suppose the same could be in, in your situations. And if you were to reach out and try to get that pricing information, this might be a helpful resource for you. Um, and yeah. Um, I, I noticed obviously the most obvious thing is pricing for funerals, but do you also contain information on funeral services that may not be attached to a particular home? This is something I didn't even realize existed until I became a pastor. But I noticed when you were doing a search very close by in this uh, zip code, there's one right up the road here, all Ohio cremation that you can see listed on. Yeah, and all of that information might it might have been how I um, had the, the toggle. Anytime we find a, there are, for instance, there's funeral home service companies that don't have physical locations that are in our directory. Okay. There, there can totally be a case though where we don't have them in for no other reason than we just don't have their information. So we're adding people all the time that maybe we missed the first time around, but there's no rhyme or reason for that. It's just that we didn't have their information at first. I'll check that one out. Because that was familiar to me, so I want to make sure that they're in. They should be in the network. Yeah, they're not pretty much on our funeral home up there on the uh, ramp. And I know that I know that they're in the network, so I have to make sure that they are too. Okay, One of the things that used to dictate the families which funeral home they choose was ethnic identity. I assume this uh, you know that that identity is diminishing. You don't think the Irish or the German or the Italian or African American, but uh, it, yeah, it certainly depends. I mean, there will be. I will say this: there will be some families where a service like ours just isn't needed because they know exactly where they want to go, and that's a great thing. If, if there's a family that they automatically know where they want to go because yeah. they grandma and grandpa were, there, were were taken care of by them, mom and dad. Were yeah. There. If they have a real, there's a, there's a family. What we found, we did a we did a study where we surveyed hundreds of people throughout the country over the age of 35, and we asked them if you had to plan a funeral service for a friend or family member today, what best describes your situation. What we found is about 30 percent said that they knew exactly where they wanted to go, and that might have been because they had a real relationship, a real bond. Or maybe it, there was, you know, it's it's the only ethnic funeral home in their town, and they, that was still important to them. Um, another twenty percent or so of people said that they had some idea, but they weren't really sure who they would go with. And that might be a situation where what we've seen a lot is family will say, "Well, yeah, we've all, we've used this funeral home, but that's because it's we don't really have a relationship per se. It's just the the." other option of going and figuring out who else to work with is too complicated. Nobody wants to visit 12 funeral homes face to face. It's nothing yeah. against the funeral director. It's just that's not something people want to do. Not in the midst of grief. Right. Um, what we found in our survey, at least, over half of the people said that they absolutely had no idea where to go. So we, and that might be, 
again, for the people that do know exactly where to go, I, I go back to where my wife's from in Salem, Ohio, there being only one funeral home in the area, that's going to be an easier decision for them than Parma or Lakewood or, you know, even, frankly, the near west side where there's a few funeral homes in the area. So we won't, we might not be helpful to absolutely everybody, but for the families that don't know where to turn to, we're hoping that they can get information from us. Let me ask Mike, um, I'm aware of some other internet sites that have the articles, that have the planning kits, that have, what, what differs one of the things I see is different is where there's the listing of the, the actual funeral homes in a geographical location. Right. That I go to. What makes eFuneral different from those other internet sites that I'm aware of? Yeah, I think it's the two major things, and it's the reasons why these hospice and hospitals are, are now recommending us. Mm -hmm. It's the pricing information, okay. and it's the ability for families to share their experiences. Okay. Even if we don't have reviews for everybody quite yet, it's the ability for families to, to, to do that. Facilitate that. Yeah, yeah, because you know, there's a lot of websites that'll have just the basic information or articles, and that's great. But at the end of the day, you know, we found is the families. There's two major things that matter. Um, there's several things, but two of the major things are what are they going to charge us, and what kind of service quality can we expect. And that's where we're trying to be different than everybody else where aside from just the basic info, we're trying to take it a step further and provide info that people can use to make a more informed decision. At the, at the risk of kind of sounding self-serving for, for clergy, is there, is there a way to put resources for the funeral homes themselves? Like, for instance, because my church starts with a B, I get a lot of calls from funeral homes going through the um, phone book going, Hey, I, I need pastor. 90% of funerals that I've done have been people I've never met. Is there a way to possibly put a resource for funeral homes? Hey, here's a list of clergy, and here are people that you know that you may be able to connect with. Yeah, I think there there could be. I mean, that's not something that we've like actively thought about up until this point. But there's, for instance, there's uh, you know, to create an article in the resources section and and have it be specific towards the funeral homes in that area, there's not a reason we couldn't do that. Yeah, that's a good feedback, though. We haven't really thought about that quite yet. And then we are, you know, as a startup, we're always trying to think of what are new things that we can add. Like, for instance, in the very beginning, from February up until about a month ago, the way that eFuneral worked was much different than what you see now. And, and Alan's seen it, so he can attest to that. But basically, a family would submit an inquiry funeral homes that were in our network would get the inquiry and decide if they could respond with a quote. And then the family could review the quotes and then move forward with whoever they want to, whether it's, it doesn't have to be the lowest price. Um, and that was great. It, you know, people were able to get between five and seven quotes within a few minutes. The problem was it's still five to seven quotes. And sometimes people wanted to see more information. They wanted to see, well, gosh, if a funeral home down the street didn't respond, what would have they charged? And so sometimes what we found is they'd take the information and walk into that funeral home and they got value out of our service, they told us, because they felt like, well, no, now I'm armed with the information. But it wasn't, they weren't, work, they weren't, um, they weren't moving forward like we thought they were going to move forward. It was helping them, but not in a way that we thought we would be able to help them. So it, it led to us changing drastically to the current website where we just list the information out there Rather than waiting to receive quotes, you can just access that information in a few minutes. Now, the, the pricing information, is that um, static or is it dynamically changing? In other words, funeral homes' own costs do change right. over time. So how, how is that? Yeah, so and that's a good question. Uh, funeral homes can change that at any time. Basically, and it also, you know, there's another question. I'm sure you might be thinking, well, if you're a business, like how do you even make money, right? Because we're, we don't charge families to use this. But basically, we, we have funeral home memberships where for free, any funeral home, if they found, for instance, that all Ohio cremation, if they found that they weren't in our directory, for free, they can set up an account, put their picture up there, list their pricing, and they can edit that information at any time. So if their pricing changed tomorrow, they can go and change that. And we don't charge for that. We want to show as many people as possible. But if a funeral home wanted to have, you know, they want to show up in that featured area, 
or if they want, we add a couple extra tools in their profile, like a, a text to, uh, it's called a click to text button. So a family can put information in there and it gets text messaged to the funeral home uh, director. If they want things like that, or adding videos, for instance, to their profile, they can sign up for a premium membership. And, you know, there's, we, and we make sure that we let people know who our premium members are too, so that there's no confusion there. But um, that's, where the, that's where part of the business model comes into play, aside from the e-funeral featured offers too. But for free, any funeral home can be listed and change their information, including pricing, anytime that they want to. For us, what we do is every, every year, we go back and revisit what pricing is. And we're not a year old, so you know, we've only really done it once so far, but every year we'll be revisiting that. Yeah? Question about the review process. I, just looked, I was gonna look at a review sheet, but I didn't wanna sign up. For yeah. The what kind of, <laughs> I, I'm, gonna, um, I'm gonna ask the question and then tell you why I'm asking the question. What kind of questions are asked or opportunities to give information are there? And the reason that I ask that is that one of the feedbacks that I get from this particular feedback, pieces of feedback that I get about a particular uh, funeral home in my area is that they're, they're really pushy. They try to upsell all the time. And although the prices might be there, uh, you know, getting, they're trying to push the golden casket on me. And right. Kind of stuff. And I felt very uncomfortable about that. Right. So are there, there questions that lead into the possibility? Of yeah. And you know what? I'll walk through and kind of show you right. what that is here. Um, and two things about reviews. We will allow anybody to post a review. We also verify reviews. So for premium members, we're going and, and making sure that we follow up with the family to make sure it's a real review. And premium or verified reviews will show up first. We don't want to prohibit people from leaving a review, but we want, you know, certain people, they might not trust the review if it seems, you know, like, well, gosh, is it just that funeral director that left it? Or is it a competing funeral director leaving a negative <laughs> review? Yeah. Um, so we, we do that as well. But yeah, let's I'll just go in and, and show you the process. I'll click review here, and I'll just sign in Facebook. So the first question it's going to ask is, you, you want to know what, let me go back and pick, we have like a uh, test funeral home account, and this way if it actually goes through, I don't have to worry about me leaving a review for that funeral home. Exactly, no. Um, okay, so the first is, did you, did you plan the funeral service? And sometimes this is important to people. They, you know, they want to know, is it the person that actually went through all of that and planned it out, or is it just somebody that attended? And both might still be important, but we're trying to differentiate those two. So we'll say, yes, I personally planned. Um, now, these are, these are pretty basic. At for, um, so there's two types of reviews. Um, in this one, it, it's really just overall and then comments. So they can just, in open comments, leave their experience. But here they can choose, you know, seven. And in this case, they can go on and explain why it was that maybe the funeral home felt like they were pushy. Um, for funeral homes, we do offer a service where we'll go out and survey those families. And there's essentially eight questions that we ask, and it's everything from you know, did, did the pricing match up with what they actually charged you? Um, what, you know, did you feel that they were, they gave you the personal service you needed? There's a series of questions that we're asking. So those reviews, the, the verified reviews will be a little bit more extensive, but here they're more open-ended, but there is an opportunity where they can share that. So it's just, we try to keep it simple, but yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other any other questions? One thing I'll show you is that we we do have we put together and they're actually going we're supposed to pick them up from the printer today family kits and I'll definitely leave some for you but basically it's a envelope that if, if you know a family or an individual you felt like could have value out of some of the services that we're offering. We have a um, sample from our resources section 
a little pocket informational card on a checklist of what to do, like sort of things to do after a death occurs. Um, there's just an informational card on a funeral. And then what might be the most valuable is a, a list of all the funeral homes that we've been able to find in Northeast Ohio. Um, and we do that for other markets. And that list doesn't, it's not members. We don't even say who's a member and who isn't. It's just a list and phone number of every funeral home in the area. So rather than having to handwrite a list out and hand it to somebody, you'll be able to give them something. And if they want to log on to eFuneral and, and look at pricing and reviews, they can do that. But it's just we're, we're trying to provide this information so that it makes those conversations maybe a little bit easier. And these are free. We don't, uh, it's just, all, all it is is you ask us for them and we give them to you. And you just, if you need more, we give you more. So this, know that this is available to anybody. Um, and what I'll do is I'll leave some of my cards behind so that if you then get something that would be valuable, let me know and we'll make sure that we can mail you some of these too. But that was one of the questions we got, especially from hospice facilities, was, was there anything physical to hand out? Yeah. Another factor that a lot of families run into is not understanding what is legal and required and what is not. In other words, does the body have to be in the wrong ways? Right. Yeah. Why do you have to pay for a, a, a vault at the cemetery? Well, that's the cemetery determines that, not the state of law. That's right. Those sorts of questions. Yeah. I, the resource center, we try to address a lot of those questions. He, um, even another thing that we, we get here a lot is, well, gosh, you know, I, I see the funeral home's pricing, but then there's all these other things that pop up, death certificates, um, you know, costs for using the limo, that's not, that wasn't covered up front. Those are cash advance items. We're trying to provide as much information as we can in the resource section to sort of make the whole process a little bit more transparent. Because right now, to some families, funeral planning not only is it scary, and you know, not only is it pain to go through, but it just feels like there's a lot of secrecy involved. And I think most often it's not necessarily that the funeral director is trying to be secretive about those things. It's just something that people don't understand. So we're trying to help people understand that more. Well, I think, too, on the other side of the coin, <clears throat> you don't want to see like this cold marketing. Right. I mean, the funeral directors I have dealt with, most of my ministry, um, one particular individual I'll use in our Iowa, um, their, their funeral home business is like a ministry to the families. It's a small, it's like all the other towns in Iowa, you know, you know <laughs> the morning you see the rabbits. And Doug has been one of the it's been a pleasure to work with him over the past, those years that I was out there. Because some do come across as slick ways. Right. You know, the, the big, the big funeral home in um, Right. It does seem like you're walking into a, into a car. A sales pitch. Car sales. Yes. Uh, ladies. I, I mean, it does. Right. I've, I've heard that from maybe not here in Northeast Ohio. Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. We, we agree. I mean, we think, so, we think funeral service is really important. We think it's so important that people shouldn't feel like they have to pick out of a hat just to know who to call. Like, we're hoping that our platform can provide, the, can be the medium that that specific funeral home can tell their story. Because right now, there's not a whole, I mean, unless a family knew that up front about that specific funeral home, which many in that town probably would, but otherwise, you know, a funeral home website, many of them don't have websites, but even then it's, it's a one-sided story because, of course, they're going to say they're the best funeral home in town and they provide the best service. So we're trying to, as a third party, we're trying to provide a forum where that message can come sure. across and families can trust that. I think that one thing that people just aren't aware of some are in the midst of grief, it's not something you're necessarily thinking about. But a lot of times with funeral pricing, you can absolutely choose things out of the car. A lot of times yes. funerals will package things, but it's like I may not need like greeting cards because I can provide those myself for a fraction of the cost. I'm wondering if I, I noticed you have a pricing list, but are there like check boxes where you can say, okay, wait a minute, I want 
direct cremation and I want flowers, like don't want green, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, and that's good feedback. We, we try to, we have several articles that explain like what is required and what, what isn't, like what can be purchased a la carte as you mentioned. Um, but we're trying to figure out ways that we can better explain that right in the profile. Right. So we probably don't do as good of a job as we could be doing with it. But I, so that, I think that's really good feedback for us to continue to try to look into. Most of my ministry, I've always advised snowbirds to, if something happens to them, they, let's say they go to Florida in the winter, and they trust the funeral home back here in Ohio because that's where they live for 50 years. So contact your home funeral director and have him make the arrangements there in Florida mm. because there are a lot of unethical ones that we, we sure. are not aware of. I mean, this is certainly a help in that direction. Sure. And, and, and the comfort for the people is we're going to deal with who we know right. from previous. See, we had a we first on these. Scenario. My mother-in-law, three years ago, was living with us, had been living with us in nursing care for the last seven five years. Yeah. Well, we're all from Portland, Oregon. Her, her desire was to be buried with her husband at Willamette National Cemetery in Portland, Oregon. Because she could be buried there for free as a spouse and a veteran. But the transport, the interstate transport of the remains, we we did. We took uh, Doug, I was talking about the funeral home director yeah. in, in Iowa. He took the lead at their home and then they connect, we they then connected with the funeral home that had last dealt with my father and worked that right. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think if there's a funeral home that a family trusts like no other, they should be working with that funeral home. We, right. we don't ever want to change that. I mean, we're, we're trying to provide info to people that maybe don't have that connection, but I agree. People should work with who they really trust. Um, that's all I really had in terms of presenting. And these are all really great questions. It's actually good for me to go back and take some of this feedback so that we can implement it. But... And any other questions or anything? Yeah. Um, back to that section where uh, other services could pay to be connected, like yeah. florists and so forth. Could a church uh, pay to be listed? I mean, not the... Right. Yeah. Right. I suppose that they could. I mean, we don't... We haven't... Uh, and even with the current members, we haven't really actively sought out. It's been more people that have come to us. Sure. But... Um, yeah, I mean, we'll be judging it on a case-by-case -case basis. There's certain, I mean, you'll notice you don't see banner advertising on the website for a reason. I mean, we, there are some directories I've been to where you'll go in and a, uh, you're looking at a profile and there's a personal injury attorney at the yeah. top. So there's certain things that we won't allow. Thank but, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but we would absolutely allow a church to, if, if they wanted to be listed, they could be. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to say absolutely any business could because we'll sometimes, again, we'll make that judgment call, but, but yeah, we wouldn't have a problem with that. Any other questions? Well, if you don't mind, I'll leave some cards behind and then this yeah. way, if there's things that come up, um, definitely give me a call or just shoot me an email. But yeah. I appreciate you sharing your time with me. Let's thank Michael for his...